Good afternoon. It is time for some Kerbal Space Program. This is DanBearPig82. And uh, let's take down the starting soon screen and dive right in. Here we go. <laughs> oh. Cancel that. Clicked to uh, activate this window and it had me on the settings screen. There we go. Hey, Kit. Welcome. Highlight my message first. Spending those carbon credits. You are indeed first. Welcome to the stream. Let's see. Uh, let's go back in. Stock final approach. Here we go. Very creatively named, like all my things. And I've got some new stuff to show off today and some old stuff to uh, clean up from low carbon orbit. All right, so let's take a look. Um, if we look up here at the... Uh, the alarms. Uh, when we left, I believe we had about 90 days till the next uh, Moho transfer window. Transfer? Does that say transfer with a V? That's interesting. Huh. I am indeed doing well today. Thank you for asking, Kit. Um, yeah, so uh, I've done a little bit of uh, routine maintenance, a few minor uh, things, sent some uh, fuel tanks and some uh, extra escape pods up to the space station. I uh, fixed uh, Elalong and uh, Ripley Kerman, who uh, I, I don't know why were, were marked as dead, even though nothing had happened to them. So that was definitely a bug. And not just me saying it's a bug, it really was. So yeah, we are two months out from our next Moho transfer window. Um, the thing is, whatever we send there, the best we can do is maybe send the same satellite into um, hopefully an orbit. Uh, because we don't have any new science experiments since the last time. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> I feel better. I feel happy. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I uh, bungled the quote just a little bit there. <laughs> yeah, not dead yet. So um, if they really were dead, we'd be having a memorial service today. Hopefully no uh, memorial services in the near future. But yeah, so uh, this track here has our next science experiments and we look here scanning tech uh, we have an infrared telescope that we can launch into orbit soon so that's kind of a lot like uh, the uh, James Webb telescope uh, not you know exactly the same it's a, a pretty close equivalent in here the closest thing we've got um, surface scanners survey scanners so these are something that we could potentially send to Moho if we can unlock this before the next transfer window um, otherwise we'd be sending something, but it would just take a little bit more Delta V to get it there. Um, atmospheric fluid spectrovariometer. I think this one you do actually have to be in the atmosphere to use. Um, unlike the press map barometer, which you can use in a vacuum and it tells you, hey, you're in a vacuum, there's nothing for me to see. Um, there's a better scanning arm. We're going to be using the scanning arm we unlocked recently. Hopefully today, if all goes well. <laughs> Um, but then what I'm really interested in is not going to come very soon because, first off, we cannot research anything in these tiers until we upgrade the Science Center, which is expensive, and we are hurting a little bit for the funds right now. But this would give me the GravMax Negative Gravioli Detector. <laughs> yeah, it has to be an Atmosis kit. Yeah, I thought so. Thank you. Yeah, but this is my, my favorite particle name in all of fiction the gravioli. And uh, give me just a moment. I have a uh, text from my stepdaughter. She is babysitting the kids since my wife is out of town. Okay. Yeah, she's feeding the bebas for me. And I promised I would be uh, on call just in case so uh and this gives us the large scanning arm too so yeah the good stuff there and uh refineries but yeah there's a there's a small chance but a real chance that i may have to do the brb screen um at some point and help out just so that you are aware but yeah i'm uh, excited to be streaming this again so yeah the hope for the near future is to unlock some of this science and send some new science experiments to moho since that is the next thing that we are going to have a good transfer window for. Um, after that, it's another month before we can send anything to Drez efficiently. Um, of course, we can send stuff to other planets at any time, but it's very costly to do so. 
Um, and then the next one is Elu, the farthest planet out, and that is in about two-thirds of a year. So we've got a little bit of time there, but we're definitely going to keep running the clock out. So today, the two main events, though, are to send a, uh, a moon buggy to the moon and uh, hopefully use it to gather some science. And uh, then at the end of the stream, we are going to do a spectacular, hopefully, <laughs> decommissioning of Station One, our trusty first space station in the game. And uh, it's time to take it out of orbit. Never made it to Elu, said Kit. I've made it to Elu. I think I've made it to all of the actual planets, but not all of the moons. So uh, Elu is very cool. <laughs> I'm excited to go to that. Um, when uh, when the New Horizons probe went past Pluto, and uh, I was watching all those pictures come in of those mountains and the extremely small gravity, I just really can't get rid of this uh, this fantasy of wanting to go there, hike up those mountains in low gravity, just kind of bounce up there, and then slowly sled down or ski down. <laughs> Skiing in microgravity uh, would be hilariously fun. Um, let's real quick check the contracts. Um, so we, uh, I've accepted a couple more. Um, there aren't as many rescue missions being offered, but I want to keep these handy in case uh, there are, is anyone redeeming, uh, rescue my Kerbal. <laughs> and, uh, ah yes, the New Horizons pictures were incredible, says so Kit. Yeah, those were so cool. I was uh, working while those were coming in, and I was so distracted <laughs> just watching those come in. Mountains of rocky ice. Yep. And uh, mostly not water ice either. <laughs> Very cold there. And very dark. So yeah, we have uh, this one that we've had for a while to explore Minmus. We have gone on an orbital spacewalk. That was Jebediah Kerman. And that was his ill-fated mission where he uh, went the wrong way and uh, got flung out towards Duna. So we haven't returned anything from orbit of Minmus technically. Uh, since uh, the things that we have sent to orbit around Minmus have come back on different vehicles. So we have kind of completed this. But not according to the game. Science data from space around Duna. We have that. We just need to uh, bring it home, and that uh, should be in a, about a, a year in game, hopefully. <laughs> and so we have uh, an orbital rescue and uh, of Kerbin, and this one is a little bit different. Um, we rescue the entire craft and bring it home from orbit around the moon. Gene Kerman sounds like the one. Yes, oh, I made that uh, observation a lot. Uh, Gene Kerman sounds like the Wandering Trader in Minecraft. The uh, the Kerbals and the Villagers, especially the Wandering Trader in Minecraft, they sound very similar. Hmm. Mm hmm. And uh -huh. <laughs> so those are my uh, those are my imitations. So those are our current active contracts, and uh, that one in particular, when we finish it, very lucrative. That can pay for an entire launch of our Callisto heavy launch, heavy lift vehicle. And so we're going to likely be doing a lot more of these contracts in the near future, especially since some new ones are available to us and uh, get our financials in order. <laughs> so uh, Alexander Hamilton style, see to our financial situation. <laughs> so there we go. Let's uh, now then jump into the vehicle assembly building and take a look at uh, the vehicle we plan to launch today. While I take a sip of my drink. I did my beer run, so I am I'm set now. I'm actually set to go. There we go. Alright, so let's open this up. And I've done some testing in my uh, test world. We can see all my uh, my backups. Every month I, I get rid of the, uh, the oldest month worth of those. Um, but in the stock test program, that's where I've been doing uh, kind of sandboxy things. It's a career mode save that is a copy of a very recent one of these backups, but I gave myself a lot of extra money so that I can basically do sandbox, but with the same technology level of the actual live game. So, um, but I've moved it here, and if I go... Um, where is it? Rover Deployer this right here <laughs> and um kit i may need your assistance here because you are good at backronyms correct 
and I have been trying and trying to come up with a good fun name for this thing that is also an acronym for something and um, going with either a, a bear pig a bear theme or a pig theme since you know Dan bear pig who is a man bear pig <laughs> um, I'm thinking since this is my first rover and it's a little guy I want to call it the the cub but I'm not 100% set on that so um, like the best I've I've come up with is uh, the curiosity and understanding buggy but that's not particularly great but you know CUB so that works and uh, <laughs> or something meme because you know I've already got NFT station just to uh, poke fun at that whole garbage situation there with the NFTs <laughs> so the nearby fuel tank orbiting the moon uh, but yeah, so this doesn't have an official name yet, but it is tentatively dubbed the Cub Rover. So, <laughs> but yeah, uh, anything like bear, pig, hog, or anything meme if uh, you can think of a, a good backronym uh, more clever than mine, I am very much open to it. So we're going to send this unmanned. So Eric, he is so eager. He's always climbing board my ships. Especially when I send the uh, escape pods up to the station, I have to tell him, no, 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 get out. So we're going to send this unmanned. Uh, it's a lot safer that way. And then we're going to send a crew and land it next to the rover and they are going to get in. So that is the plan. Um, but yeah, I've got, uh, let's take a look at this real quick. If I zoom in, I've got a robot arm, a legit robot arm to deploy this it's secured with these struts and when we land it safely because uh, of course we are gonna land it safely on the surface of the moon um, on these landing legs the uh, struts will detach and the rover will be set gently next to the lander <laughs> um, we have to remember to uh, set the brakes first uh, we, we definitely want to set it down with the parking brake active. So, in fact, I think I'm going to do that uh, when we get to the launch pad. Let's go there now. Because otherwise, yes, this thing will uh, roll downhill on its own and we'll have to go chasing it. <laughs> Not a problem in my tests since I sent it with a crew um, most of the times that I tested it. But, uh, yes... Profuse integration of geologic exploration and telecommunications. The piglet. Okay, that's it. It's the piglet. <laughs> oh, I like it. I love it. All right, let's um, let's let's rename it now. It's the piglet. Um. Okay, we're stuck in there. Can I get to this? Yes. All right. Uh, rename vessel. It is a rover. Uh, if I can type, I keep doing that. Oh, I have the shift down. That's why. Let's caps lock. <laughs> All right. It's the piglet. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Kit. That is brilliant. I knew I uh, kept you around for a reason. Baby pig instead of baby bear. I like it. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's let's uh, let's go ahead and launch this. Let's check our staging real quick. This is a stretched version of the Arcus medium lift vehicle. So yeah, we've got our main engine and the uh, launch stability enhancers, the boosters, and then we have our separatrons and we separate those, yes. And then stage separation, second engine, and stage separation, and our landing engines, okay. All right, and this has 5.3 kilometers per second of delta V. So let's get up our flight recorder. We do not need FMRS for this because we are not recovering any of these stages. So flight recorder on, we want altitude, we want acceleration, and we want aerodynamic pressure. All right, throttle up. Um, stability assist is on. And let's uh, do our countdown. All right, here we go, five. Four, three, two, one, and launch. And we have cleared the tower. The vehicle is pitching downrange. We're just gonna stay in this view this time, mostly because I uh, I forgot to uh, set a camera angle, but you know, the classic view is nice also. When piglets fly. 
<laughs> oh man, if I'd had the name before starting the stream, I would have been all over the place with that joke. <laughs> that is great. I love it. All right, let's uh, look prograde. And our vehicle is supersonic. Rename the stream I could. All right, we have booster separation and maximum aerodynamic pressure. This really has a peak for max Q on the graph uh, because of the uh, steep loss of thrust right there when the uh, SRBs burn out. <laughs> oh, I could. Um, let's see. <laughs> After after this, let's uh, we'll do that. <laughs> All right. Yep. I'm gonna be chuckling over that for a while. Let's change to orbital reference there and get some more lateral velocity. Correct our inclination just a bit. And I'm gonna keep this encapsulated all the way to the moon if I can. So, <laughs> all right, and we have main engine cutoff, stage, stage separation, and second engine start. I also had to uh, upgrade this engine uh, just a bit. We no longer have the poodle, we have the skiff. Um, it's a little bit heavier, but it gives, and a little bit less efficient, but it gives 50 more kilonewtons of thrust, and that was very much needed to. Um, <laughs> to actually get this heavy load into heavier load into orbit. Kit says, I'm just sitting at my desk with this goofy grin staring at my computer, so hoping nobody looks over at me. <laughs> oh, they can watch too. It's okay. I still need to watch um, your first craft episode. That is still on my list. The thing with uh, watching YouTube videos um, if I'm doing something at the same time, I like watching ones that I mostly just listen to and don't watch so much. So most of my hermit craft and stuff um, mostly is just listening while I do other things. But uh, some videos, especially uh, from my friends, I like to sit and actual watch all the way through. So those tend to uh, tend to get pushed back a little bit. <laughs> All right, and we're going to maintain this 15 degree um, attitude. Actually, I think we're going to pitch up a little bit more to 30 degrees. And we can dismiss the flight recorder. And yeah, now we can just chill while this thing uh, chugs its way to orbit <laughs> with these uh, landing gear and engines on the outside it's uh, got some fun details we turn down the baby monitor sounds like uh, she's putting the babies to bed just right on time it's uh, about their nap time so that is perfect and looking at the time to apoapsis it's going down very slowly which is a good sign we can actually pitch down a little bit now back down to 15 degrees and yep our periapsis is coming up nice and quick yeah this thing just was not making it to orbit with a poodle for the upper stage engine so uh, the skiff is the way to go uh, from here on out. I think when I first uh, designed the uh, the Arcus medium launch vehicle, medium lift vehicle, um, I did not have the skiff yet, if I recall. And we can actually choose our target now. Let's choose the moon. And uh, let's, uh, let's look at the... Uh, cargo let's make sure I, i'm pretty sure I, I set the cargo right but let's double check while we're on our way um oh we're outside the there we go 
Okay, yep, I've got some Separatrons in there for reasons. Don't worry about it. Um, let's see, those are repair kits and lights. Repair kits and lights. Okay, so I actually need to send some science kits. Okay, so I will send not enough struts. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> more struts. Every problem in Kerbal Space Program is either more boosters or more struts. Let's point prograde now. So, yeah, I need to send some science experiments with the crew. Because we want to deploy some science and uh, see if we can gather uh, more data from the moon, from various places, and uh, get some more of that tech tree unlocked. All right, we have an orbit, and our apoapsis is 150 meters. Let's go ahead and... Uh, warped there. Yeah, here we are, and let's uh, go ahead and warp to our apoapsis. And circularize our orbit, and then plan our transfer to the moon. There we go, a roughly circular orbit. Uh, Kit says it's the amended engineer's motto. If it's moving and it shouldn't, add struts. If it's not moving and it should, add boosters. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it it literally exactly is that. Replaces duct tape and WD-40. Yeah, a lot of people call the, the struts uh, space duct tape. There we go. All right, so where are we in relation to the moon? There it is, so it's going to be about there-ish when we reach it. So that's pretty good. Let's add a maneuver right about here. Perfect. <laughs> Do that enough times and it uh, is easy to eyeball. All right, so I've got the moon's periapsis pinned. Let's get this thing in really close. Hundred and twenty kilometers. I'm thinking like twenty-five kilometers. That'll do like thirty kilometers there. Okay, and that's an eight hundred meter per second burn. That's uh, gonna use up the rest of our upper stage. That's pretty much perfect. And that's coming up in seven and a half minutes, so let's uh, warp just a bit. Alright, we're two minutes away, let's... This thing doesn't have very good attitude control. Oh, part of that is because I have turned off the reaction wheels in this, because there's an issue with these. If you have uh, the reaction wheels on and you try to throttle up or, uh, or maneuver forward, <laughs> the thing becomes a low rider. So, uh, reaction wheels... Uh, disabled, yep, there it is. Let's... Uh, toggle torque. Yeah, running. There we go. Now it is pointing prograde. And we just need to remember to turn those off. Uh, did I set those to an action group? I think I did. Oh, interesting. Okay. All right, yeah, that is fine. Okay, we can do this. This will work just fine. So we need to go about 20 more seconds, right about to here. And uh, now let's do our transfer burn. Engines throttle up. Yeah. 
And yeah, we are on our way. Accelerating at about 1G here, just over 1G. And since we don't have a crew aboard, we really don't need to worry too much about G-forces because uh, these parts have absurdly high uh, tolerances. <laughs> Yeah, decent thrust to weight ratio, and that was the issue with the Poodle. It just did not have the TWR for uh, the upper stage. It was too low um, with this load on it, so uh, it was time to upgrade the engine. That efficiency, that uh, specific impulse does not matter if it can't even get it to orbit. Alright, let's throttle down for some precision here at the end. And in fact, let's get rid of that, simply point prograde, and pin this one, and fine-tune our actual periapsis. Two hundred kilometers, one hundred. There we go, that is perfect. <laughs> Just using more poodles. <laughs> Unfortunately, there aren't husky engines to form a dog sled team to the moon. That would be amazing. That would be really amazing. <laughs> Add more poodles, yes. Uh, we'd have a, a wide, fat rocket. <laughs> and let's see, we have... Um, we're in shadow right now. Well, not completely. But we have solar panels. And is that going up? Yeah, that is charging up. Okay, good. So we are good. Let's uh, go ahead and warp to the moon. Let's go just a little bit past our sphere of influence change. That's almost a one day trip. Well, it is a one day trip to the periapsis. And here we are in the moon's sphere of influence. And yet yeah, we have a full battery. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and get closer in and let's point retrograde. Because we're going to want to get a nice capture orbit. Choose our landing spot. And come down, hopefully gently. <laughs> All right, here we are pointing retrograde. Let's uh, warp a little bit more. We've got about 26 meters per second left in our upper stage, and then we will be using our landing stage to complete this. We're two minutes away from our periapsis. All right, let's get back into this view here. Yep. All right, and uh, let's start the engine. And there we go. Stage jettisoned, and now let's start these engines and throttle up. We're in an orbit. Let's watch our apoapsis drop. 200 kilometers, 100 kilometers. All right, that is about as close as I dare. So we want to find a nice flat spot. Let's look at our orbit. We have a nice inclined orbit, which gives us a lot of options. So we're going around this way. Let's uh, change our focus to the moon. 
There we go. And I think we'll get a lot of good options if we set down right about here. Um, between these two craters. So let's uh, go ahead and warp just a bit. All right, and now let's uh, start the engines again and let's slow down. Lots of good landing spots right here. Oh, look at that. Look at that view right there. <laughs> that is great. Yeah, right here. That's what we're aiming for. Uh, Tomb Sim, hey, welcome, and thank you for uh, sharing those bits. I don't have a, an animation in Kerbal Space Program yet for that, unfortunately. Sorry about that, but yeah, thank you. Um, and I think I recognize your name. Um, tell me a bit about yourself. So yeah, we are 18 kilometers up, and we are going to point retrograde again, and we're relative to the surface. And we should be coming down right about there. Yeah, I'm working slowly on my different uh, stream setups. And I've done a lot more with the Cur or the uh, Minecraft one than the Kerbal one. Uh, but I have some ideas I just not have, ha have not had time to implement yet. I just not have had time to implement yet. I cannot speak. <laughs> there we go. All right, and we're about a minute and 30 seconds to our suicide burn. And yeah, we have plenty of Delta V. We need 232 meters per second to slow down. And we have 8 and 30 uh, available. Words are rad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I kind of want to get Impulse SVs. I'm a flawless human being shirt. It's too good. Let's go ahead and deploy our landing gear. And let's get a screenshot. That's cool. Man, that is a nice illuminated Kerbin right there. We're almost low enough to get a uh, slope reading from our radar. We're going to do this gently. Yeah, 1.5 degrees, that's fantastic. 4.4, .4, still good. 8.6, less good. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right, let's uh, throttle up a bit. Throttle down, it does not take a whole lot to land on the moon. Even less to land on Minmus. Right, we're 700 meters from the ground. 500 meters. Throttle down just a bit. Let's maintain about this speed here. Yeah, fine-tuning this is rough. 250 meters. Kind of surprised you left the fairing on all this time. Yeah, well, there's a, there's a specific reason. The, uh, the, the reveal on the surface <laughs> is going to be fun. We're 90 meters up. Yeah, we go too slow and we start to get wobbly. And cut the engines. Okay, there we go. Oh, don't tip. We're fine. <laughs> All right, I figured there was a reason. Yes. 
Yes, a very specific reason. Yeah, 8.7. I was hoping for that one and a half degree slope, but that is okay. All right. All right. Here we go. And we're going to uh, go all cinematic here. Uh, can we still see Kerbin? Nope. Kerbin is over the under the horizon. Can I clip through here and see it? No. Rip. That's okay. All right. This is our view here. I'm going to take another screenshot. And here we go, the big reveal of the Piglet Rover. <laughs> Three, two, one. There we go. <laughs> Goodbye, fairings. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's make sure. Okay, the brakes are on. Fantastic. <laughs> that was a great reveal. Let's get yes. <laughs> All right, now let's hope this goes to plan um, back to the cinematic mode and let's set it down gently on the surface. Screenshot again. Beautiful, all right. And now I'm gonna want to Click on that and undock and retract the arm. And the emergency brake, the parking brake is on. Fantastic. There we go. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, that worked flawlessly. <laughs> Clever deploy deployment arm. I'm very pleased with it. That's my first actual robot arm I've built in Kerbal Space Program, and it's working very well. I very carefully uh, tink tinkered with these angles so that I could get this thing balanced and uh, not have too much uh, thrust torque. Twork, I almost said. Thrust twerk. Yeah, we don't want this thing to thrust twerk. <laughs> so that was difficult. Um, I've seen some crazy contraptions, uh, walkers and stuff with uh, the robot parts. This is the most complicated robot uh, design that I have personally made in Kerbal Space Program. There are better ways technically to deploy this, probably, um, but uh, like we could do a, um, a sky crane. I've done that in the past and those are fun, but I'd never done the robot arm and I'm very pleased with it. So yeah, there's the Piglet Rover right there. Let's uh, go back here and switch to it. Piglet lander okay it's calling it a lander let's uh make sure that it is a rover there we go and accept um let's take away let's call it piglet one because who knows we might have other ones we'll definitely be putting this down on other planets uh and moons and then this this is the lander There we go. Even more profuse. <laughs> okay, there we go. So now we need to give it a crew. We need to bring a crew over. So let's go. Let's go to Arcadia Station. There we go. Now I can find it. There's station one. That will be crashing later. And switch two. There we go. And that definitely calls for a drink. All right, there we go. And yeah, the oh, the frame rate here hurts. It's it's really painful. But yeah, we've got more fuel. This thing is fully fueled and ready to go. Um, even the RCS fuel is topped off. We have six uh, of the derp pods, the uh, deployable emergency return pod. And uh, yeah, these are topped off as well, ready to go. 
And so here we have Kit, our scientist, Shipwreck, our engineer, and Raider, our pilot. And I think we're going to be sending Kit and Shipwreck. <laughs> you like the, the derp module? I do too. So this thing is going to hurt even more on the frame rate. I'm getting about 12 frames per second right now because uh, to fully um, equip this with return pods for a full crew of uh, 24, <laughs> we need 24 of these, not six. So uh, that means um, I've got a, a little node that I can hook up to here and uh, dock four of these to each of the arms, each of the spokes. Um, but that is a lot of parts, so uh, <laughs> we might wait on that until uh, this thing is fully assembled, fully operational, and then put those on there just for the looks, really. Um, but yeah, this is done. This needs to go. Um, there's plenty of space junk that we're going to need to uh, need to uh, clean up later. That's a small station. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Compared to some I've seen. Yeah, I've seen some crazy videos with uh, stations with uh, a couple, you know, thousand parts and uh, YouTubers getting uh, one or two frames per second and having to speed up the video just to show anything. Um, I had a station which had a solar array with 32 panels, but the file's broken now. Oh, sad. That's, uh, that's a lot of panels. All right, so let's see. Uh, we've got... Um, we're gonna we're gonna have Raider do the flying though. So all of you guys are going on this mission. Old mod pack that's out of date. That is unfortunate. Okay, Raider is aboard. Um, Kit is enjoying the view here. In the cupola. Transfer. And Kit, the scientist, you get uh, the view from here. Uh, go to here, please. There we go. I don't know why it wouldn't, uh, wouldn't send you there. But there you go. Crawling through the tubes. And let's see. Shipwreck is already aboard, I believe. Kit. No, just Raider. So where is Shipwreck? Gotta find Shipwreck Kerman. There he is. Okay. Transfer. Um, engineer, so co-pilot seat, I believe, would be appropriate. All right, there we go. And let's send this thing to the moon. And this is risky. <laughs> this is going to be the first attempt to actually land this thing on the moon. And it does have landing legs, right? Okay, good. Yes. Okay, let's undock. Let's move out just a bit. And there we go. So there is now nobody aboard this station, but it should be able to handle itself for at least a little while. So let's set our target as the moon and choose our transfer window. All right, so moon will be about here. So we're actually opposite of where we want to be, I believe. Let's go to about here. Yeah, and the frames are still so low. <laughs> we're in map view, um, but it's still uh, having to calculate the physics of all those parts.
Probably should have uh, set a maneuver node here. That's okay. Set one right here. Just get an idea. Is this good? And we want it to be a little bit later. Right about there. There we go, and this is a better window right here. Pin that. Oh, I said pin it. There we go. Nope. There we go. It's pinned. <laughs> this game sometimes, I swear. Yeah, that'll be pretty good. All right, and that's coming up in two minutes. It's an 800 meter per second burn. And actually, we're going to not go that close. So we're going to watch this. We're going to want to dock with the uh, the nearby fuel tank, the NFT station. And uh, refuel. Make sure that we have the Delta V to land safely and take off again. All right, we're chasing this uh, maneuver marker on the nav ball right here. Saving our RCS fuel, just using the reaction wheels right now. Uh, can you refuel at the NFT? Exactly, that is what it is there for. There is uh, plenty of fuel for uh, at least a couple of missions there. Um, I think there are two of the, uh, the big fuel tank docked to it, and both of them are at least half full. We're going to save some of that stuff uh, because we can crash it into the moon later when it, we're done with it and get some seismic data. All right, let's uh, warp just a bit. It's a 30 second burn at full thrust. So let's get about 20 seconds out. There we go. And let's start our burn. Start at full thrust, and then we'll throttle down for the end. So I am a little bit lucky to get to stream today. Um, I was not expecting to have my stepdaughter here to watch the Bebas. Um, I was expecting that she would be with her dad this week. But she is here to help out, which is very nice. My wife is visiting a friend she hasn't gotten to see in quite a while in Florida. And uh, her friend actually works at um, Disney World in a, a reasonably prestigious position. And is being recognized for having worked there for, I think, 10 years? And so uh, she was able to invite someone to uh, come to um, the uh, celebration of that. And so uh, she is there enjoying Disney World and also free alcohol <laughs> at Disney World, which is great. And I'm jealous. <laughs> um, the unfortunate thing is that she is there. Uh, she got there, I think, two days after. A, uh, a Falcon 9 launch from Florida and will be leaving the day before a Falcon 9 launch from Florida. So bad luck on that. <laughs> she really wanted to see um, a rocket launch from there. And uh, I really wanted to see some video from an iPhone from it, <laughs> but that's okay. One of these days we're going to go visit a rocket launch. I remember when I was a, uh, a little kid living in Colorado, um, at one point we got to go watch a um, a test of one of the uh, solid rocket boosters for the space shuttle, and that was very cool. I don't know exactly how far away we were from the, the booster, but uh, there was a distinct delay 
between watching it fire up and then hearing the roar. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I was about um, eight or ten years old, something like that. But yeah, I remember it very much. All right, and let's change our target. We want stations. We want the nearby fuel tank. Which is actually at a much higher altitude. So let's let's fix this. We don't need that anymore. It's only a minor correction. There we go. That will be pretty good. Um, and I just bur or, uh, pushed this uh, radial out, so let's just look at that. Oh, I'm turning the wrong way here. Let's speed this up just a little bit, double time, so that we don't have to wait as it very slowly rotates <laughs> with the uh, with the reaction wheels. All right, so uh, yeah, that'll be uh, about 100 meters per second. And I don't actually need this. I can just hold this because I know what this maneuver is. Let's just watch our periopsis climb to about 500 kilometers. Right there. Very nice. Um, and we are out of plane as well. So we're going to uh, warp here, correct the orbit. Um, get the capture orbit, and then we're going to correct our inclination. We are 20 degrees off. But yeah, we have 1,800 meters per second to work with, um, but we can get another kilometer per second back on top of that if we fuel up to full. All right, so let's warp just a bit. Move in. Fifteen minutes away. All right, here we are at Periapsis. Let's go ahead and burn and get our capture orbit. How good is that? That's actually pretty good. Although, if I keep burning, I can bring it around again and it'll be even closer. Yeah, okay, 143 kilometers. All right, that is pretty good. And then um, right here at our periapsis uh, is the, well, at the periapsis of the station is the descending node as well. So that will be a good place to do a maneuver. Let's plan one. And it's the descending node, so we want to do normal. And there, look at that. Two good intersects. Let's uh, tighten that one a bit. How close can we get it just with this? I'm going to go back and forth across this. All right, 7.3 kilometers. That's pretty good. Okay, that is a 90 meter per second burn, and it's coming up in four hours. So, yeah, we're doing a good job uh, being productive while we run out the clock here. And Kit says, uh, I was playing KSP a semester after taking Physics 2 in college where normal vectors were very important. Yes. <laughs> yes. And... Uh, 
not only did that probably help you with the Kerbal Space Program, but I'm sure that Kerbal Space Program helped you really get uh, more than just an intellectual um, understanding of the uh, of the vectors, but kind of a hands-on, intuitive understanding. It's one thing to read about orbital mechanics, but uh, once you've actually flown a ship manually between a couple planets and uh, done some docking maneuvers, um, it's completely different. <laughs> okay, that's a two-second burn at full thrust. We're definitely not going to do full thrust here. But that means we can get pretty close to the maneuver, which is 15 minutes away. Let's get about 45 seconds away from it and then point there. There we go. Bowser, welcome. We are um, landing a crew on the moon and hopefully going to drive a moon buggy around. <laughs> Bowsy, okay, we're going to uh, we're going to rescue Bowsy Kerman. <laughs> Very cool. Bowser redeeming uh, Rescue My Kerbal for 1,000 carbon credits. And Kit says, actually, hold on. I'm going to do this maneuver and then catch up with the chat. Let's uh, go to stability assist mode. And let's gently throttle up and chase this marker on the nav ball. We're adjusting our inclination and our orbit so that we can dock with the nearby fuel tank station, the NFT station. <laughs> because I'm very funny. Alright, that is pretty good, and why can't I dismiss that? Very interesting. There we go. Very strange. Okay, uh, separation and approach. Okay, that's at that one, but at this one we will be Eight kilometers away. Okay, let's catch up with the uh, the chat. Uh, Kit says it was focused on electromagnetism, so it wasn't as much help as I would have wished, but uh, still learned to freehand some orbital mechanics on my own. Very cool. Nia! <laughs> you said my name backwards. <laughs> welcome, welcome. So, uh... Yeah, uh, very soon, um, Bowsy Kerman will be joining the ranks of uh, uh, Kit Kerman and uh, Munchie Kerman. <laughs> All right, but first we need to land this crew um, on the surface of the moon, right by the Piglet Lander, which was named by um, Kit. Let me uh, scroll up and remember what that was. Okay, it is the Profu Profuse Integration of Geologic Exploration and Telecommunications. Piglet. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right, so we're going to arrive at the uh, nearby fuel tank at uh, in one hour and 39 minutes. So let's uh, warp here. So we have a nine minute lead time. And Raider Kerman is flying the ship. All right, we are in target reference automatically here. That's perfect. Let's point retrograde. And let's take a look. Yeah, here's our ship right here, and I've left the docking open. Let's close that. There we go. Yeah, here we have Kit, our scientist. We have um, Shipwreck, our engineer, and we have uh, Raider, our uh, pilot. Okay, let's look at the target right there, 22 kilometers away, and let's see if we can uh, refine our approach just a bit and slow down, because we're going to be going 70 meters per second relative to it, which is not actually that bad. Alright, 7 kilometers. 6, 5, 4, 3. Okay, that's as close as we're going to get with that burn. Yeah, um, I if I'm pushing a retrograde, then uh, my retrograde marker gets pushed away from the direction I'm pointing. So I'm pushing it towards the retrograde target marker. <laughs> I detoured your moon trip. <laughs> that is all right. Um, let's see, maybe on the way 
back, we will pick them up. Um, we can't do the one around the moon because we don't have the grabber, but there is someone around the in orbit, low orbit of Kerbin that we can rescue, and uh, I will need to um, unload the save game and uh, rename the Kerbal and then reload it, but we'll do that on our way home. We will pick up Bowsy Kerman. <laughs> do you have a preference of what Bowsy Kerman's uh, profession should be, Bowser? All right, we're not going terribly fast, so let's go like this and time warp a bit. And we are in very close to the right orbit here. All right, six kilometers away. Let's do another correction burn. And again, so the uh, the retrograde target marker, so the target behind us is right there, and this is the uh, marker of the opposite direction of what we're going. And so if I point this way, I will push this towards that, if that makes sense. I hope I'm explaining that well. Orbital maneuvers are a little bit of a different way of thinking. It's very much a don't point at your target, point at where it's going to be sort of a thing. All right, and yeah, this will get us within 270 meters of our target, which is fantastic. Let's point retrograde again. And the station is in a circular orbit at 500 kilometers, and so we are very close to that orbit. The trick is to get very close and then match orbits. All right, let's uh, time warp again. There we go. Uh, Riven Gaming UK, hey, welcome. It is going great. Riven is a friend of mine who plays Minecraft. And again, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that. I always second guess myself if it's Riven or Riven. Is it the first one or the second one? I've asked you that a couple times before. <laughs> Sorry about that. First one, Riven. Okay, I had it right. Good. I always second guess myself on that. Yeah, we're not playing Minecraft, obviously. Um, although I guess you, I could probably try to convince people this is modded Minecraft. There is space in Minecraft mods. Um, I'll get there eventually. All right, it just loaded up the, uh, the station. We're two and a quarter kilometers away. But yeah, we are docking at a space station around the moon to refuel, and then we're going to land a crew to drive a moon buggy. Hopefully. Hopefully it goes all right. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to have some uh, memorial services. I don't want that. <laughs> I've been meaning to catch one of your KSP streams. Very cool. Are you familiar with the game at all? I actually discovered it uh, via a fellow Minecrafter about 10 years ago. All right, we're going 10 meters per second relative to our target. Uh, nope, but it's something that does look cool. Very cool. Yeah, I figured while we wait for the sequel game to be developed, hopefully it comes out this year, um, although I'm fine with them taking their time to do it right, I figured I might as well do a very thorough playthrough of this game, do all the things I haven't done before, like uh, robotic stuff. We used a robot arm to uh, deploy the rover on the moon. Um, and visit every celestial body in the Kerbin system, in the Kerbal system. I've visited a lot of them, but not all of them. All right, we can see the station in the distance there. So now we want to slow down to a stop, relative stop. And let's change our control point. Let's open this back up. And control from here, change the camera to locked, aim it at the docking port, perfect. All right, so now, as far as my maneuvers are concerned, this is the front of the ship. And we want to point at the target. There's Kerbin in the distance, we got a nice crescent there. 
and the sun shining in you guys' eyes. <laughs> and where's the moon? There's the moon behind us. Very cool. All right, let's use our reaction control system to maneuver this and get right up to the station. All right, one meter per second. Let's uh, time warp a bit. That looks cool, says Bowser. Yeah, I'd never get tired of the visuals in this game. And I do have visual mods installed. There usually aren't city lights or um, the sun flare or uh, the uh, clouds on Kerbin. But um, even without those, it's a pretty game. Very much like Minecraft. It's a very pretty game, and then you add visual mods, and it's even better. All right, let's... Uh, Let's move around to the other side of the station. And let's go to this docking port right here. I can catch it. There we go. Set as target. The Clampotron docking port. <laughs> And we're going to go perpendicular to these tanks. There we go. Riven says it's one of the games that actually takes into account how difficult it is to fly and dock in space. Yes, very much so. We we're actually just talking about um, uh, Kit here. Um, I'd like to get an accurate night sky for Minecraft. That would be cool. You can make one. <laughs> Let's figure that out. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, Kit here is a, uh, a meteorologist, and so we were talking about um, science and engineering, and uh, he's played some Kerbal Space Program, and uh, it's one thing to read about orbital mechanics. It's another thing entirely to actually put them to work and uh, and really get an intuitive understanding of it. It's a very different way of thinking. But it is incredibly satisfying. There's been no game I've ever played that has been as satisfying to accomplish something difficult as this. And there we are, already docked. Only ever did single body calculations below. That's okay, so does Kerbal Space Program. <laughs> Unless you install Principia, which gets insane. All right, that... Okay, this is the first time we are legit using this station. Let's get a cool screenshot. Let's aim the camera here. There we go. Just like that. So yeah, we can see our, our rescue ship, which I, I still need a, a name for that one. This is our nearby fuel tank around the moon, um, NFT. <laughs> and uh, this is our space forklift right here. So uh, we have two of those, one at each station. Let's bring back the UI. Perfect. Um, let's see, the extra calculus for transferring between bodies was more than any recreational math mind <laughs> was willing to do. My, my recreational math mind was willing to do. Yeah, same. It's, it's insane. The people who planned things like the Apollo missions um, the gravity assists for things like Voyager and New Horizons, it just kind of blows my mind. I, the, the math involved is insane. And these people do get an intuitive sense for it and can do a lot of it in their heads. <laughs> the, the rough stuff. All right, let's pull up the uh, uh, fuel balancer mod and let's see. Um, this is one of the big tanks. That one there, okay. All right, those are our two tanks that we want to transfer out of. And we want liquid fuel and oxidizer. And yep, we're fueling up our ship so that we have plenty of Delta V. And we'll probably fuel it up again before we go home. And rescue Bowsy Kerman. <laughs> Redeemed by K. Bowser. There we go. It's uh, transferring everything into into there too. Okay, yeah, let's. We don't want that actually. That's fine. We've got 
a full ship, it doesn't matter. And yeah, this thing later we will be crashing into the moon um, once we have some seismic uh, instruments set up and then we will do some science uh, with that. We'll uh, measure the, uh, the impact tremors. But probably not today. All right, so now let's uh, undock. There we go. And now we need to choose a target. We need the uh, the Piglet Rover. Piglet one. <laughs> so, uh, Riven, this was named by uh, Pro Kit Man. Um, since Man Bear Pig, we're using uh, bears and pigs for uh, naming schemes. And I was having a hard time thinking of a good backronym. So he came up with, uh, where is it? Here it is. The Profuse Integration of Geologic Exploration and Telecommunications Rover Piglet. So this is our first science rover. <laughs> and where is it? Right there. Okay, so we're actually well situated. Let's uh, point retrograde to orbit. Actually, that's due to service, which is the same right now. Uh, Riven says, whereas all I have been busy doing is putting upright beams in to actually make it look like something other than the lack of gravity holding up a roof in my um, Conquest Reforged world. That's what CR is, right? Conquest Reforged, that's the uh, mod pack you usually use. I've seen some of the stuff that you've put on, um, on Twitter. It looks really good. I haven't... Uh, I haven't been to your YouTube in a while. <laughs> There's so much, so much. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever feel guilty like I do, um, not having the time to watch as many creators as you want, especially, uh, especially friends. But yeah, I uh, I enjoy seeing all the stuff that you post on Twitter for sure. Okay, here's the ascending node. Let's add a maneuver. Let's choose. Let's see, normal. And retrograde. And let's change our focus to <laughs> shine the moon in you or the sun in you guys' face again. Oops. Let's do it again. The moon. There we go. This will help. Alright. want to get close. We want to practically land on top of it. All right, and so that will give me an idea of which direction to burn. I don't need to exactly do this maneuver, but uh, it's at the ascending node, so close enough I might as well get there. Let's turn off the RCS. We don't need to be using that. Yeah, we... We want to save that for docking maneuvers. In fact, let's go a little bit north of that as well. Um, that way we'll fly right over the piglet. Need to make content for YouTube again. Problem is, entire build would be in first person. <laughs> um, yeah, that's okay though. I don't think I've made a full um, YouTube episode. All right, let's uh, get rid of that and go back to normal time. Um, in about ten months, since my uh, since my twins were born, that's the last time I uploaded a full length episode, I believe. Yes. <laughs> All right, now let's uh, warp a little bit. And yeah, we have two and a half kilometers per second delta V. Um, so perfect. And we need about 700 for the landing. <laughs> Nia says, you seem to have a pretty good excuse. Yeah, um, I could do it though. I could do it. 
With DaVinci 17, you can actually speed up the build process during editing. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely play with the uh, speed in both replay mod and uh, and editing. Even just, you know, seeing a tour could be pretty cool, too. Okay, and the moon is rotating. So, actually, I need to adjust this. And let's actually change it to target. So, now, um, all my maneuvers, all my markers here will be relative to that specific spot on the surface of the moon. Which means I can, like before, push the retrograde marker towards the retrograde target marker. Or rather, the anti-target marker is a more correct term for that. Although, that's not doing what I want it to. So, interesting. So we're going to point straight out from the surface of the planet. And that's also not doing quite what I want. Let's go back to orbit, reference, and burn radial out. Because, yeah, that that's all going to shift as I curve down towards the surface of the planet. And, yes, let's fly over it. There's the fanfare. Anna, welcome! Uh oh. Did it already? Oh. <laughs> Let's see. Streamlabs. Oh, but yeah, but Streamlabs, you're 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 supposed to be gone. <laughs> That's okay, no worries about that. <laughs> Thank you for the raid, Anna. Welcome in. We are doing the space thing, as you've <laughs> mentioned it. Yeah, that's all right. No worries. All right, it looks like we've got uh, Mental Sway, uh, who I uh, am not uh, familiar with. Welcome to the stream, Mental Sway. Uh, <laughs> awesome sound. Yeah, that's the uh, the discovery hit by Kevin McLeod, the legendary Kevin McLeod. Uh, sets in Anna Raid. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Yeah, welcome, Anna. Yeah, thank you again for the raid. Anna is a uh, Minecraft player. I'm going to shout her out. Very worth a follow. I've caught a few of her streams. They're very entertaining, nice and chill. Um, plays Minecraft Bedrock Edition. But yeah, we, uh, we've we landed a rover, the Piglet rover, named by uh, Pro Kitman. Um, and uh, later I'll scroll back and get the acronym again, unless, uh, Kit, you've got it and want to uh, say it again. <laughs> it's a very clever backronym by Pro Kit Man because I was having trouble thinking of one. And uh, now we have our, um, it's called Rescue 3, but it's an all-purpose passenger vehicle, really. Um, and it is going to attempt to land um, and give a crew to the rover. Yes, the Profuse Integration of Geologic Exploration and Telecommunications. <laughs> Dan, haven't you heard, Susanna? I also do Java. I only do Java on the SASMP. <laughs> so do you actually play Java version for that, or is it uh, with the, um, um, I forget the name of the mod that lets you uh, do the crossplay? So I know Shipwreck has uh, worked hard to make that possible, which is great. All right, let's uh, get closer to the surface. We are, uh, surface, we are eight and a half minutes away from needing to do our, our suicide burn. And uh, I want to be very careful about this because these Kerbals are named for friends here. We've got Kit Kerman, our resident meteorologist, is the scientist on the mission. Raider Kerman is our pilot. Uh, he's not here today. Um, the real Raider, anyway. And we have Shipwreck Kerman, who is our engineer, who will be in charge of repairs, if such are necessary, on the rover itself. We can close this now. And let's go ahead and speed up the game just a little bit. 
and we are hurtling towards the uh, surface. King Kong, welcome. Good to see you here. Anna is one of us now, Dan. So actual Java version. Very cool. <laughs> I'm I'm definitely biased towards the Java version, but yes, it was uh, very nice that Shipwreck made it so that you were able to play with us on the SASMP. I used to play on that server myself. An excellent community there. All right, four minutes. And I don't want to do this all in one suicide burn. Okay, here we are here. Let's uh, go surface mode and retrograde. So the plan for the rest of the stream is to land this here, um, take the rover for a little spin, um, and then we're going to rescue Bowsy Kerman. Um, and then we are going to finish the stream by decommissioning an old space station by, uh, hurtling it down towards the surface of Kerbin, fiery through the atmosphere so that it explodes. <laughs> because why not? All right, and let's, uh, go slightly radial out from retrograde and slow down and also increase our parabolic arc. There we go. And so now I need to point south. And we are changing our trajectory so we fly directly over the rover. Just like that. And that should be pretty good. Alright, yes, yeah, so this is all going to require some very careful concentration from me. <laughs> so, let's go back here. And there's the rover right down there. Oh, dear, says Riven. That's everyone on board dead, then. <laughs> yeah, basically. Hopefully not. Uh, did I not close this? I thought I closed this. There we go. Doesn't need to be closed, but... There we go. All right, now we are basically directly above it. So let's do this. And let's uh, descend vertically. <laughs> beep, 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 back it up. I'm reversing. Beep, 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 says King Kong. <laughs> yes. Beep, 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 beep. Operation under approach, it's not going to give me that. That's too bad. Okay, that should take us right over the target. <laughs> Rune says, this vehicle is reversing. Stand clear. This vehicle is reversing. Is that how it goes in the, in the UK? I've never been there. Only place overseas I've been is Iceland. Okay. Yep, <laughs> very nice. <laughs> I'm not even going to try a, uh, a, a UK accent or a dialect. It would not go well. All right, let's uh, deploy our landing gear. 
Been to Iceland as well. Headquarters of CCP Games. I'm not familiar, I think, with CCP Games, but man, Iceland is beautiful. I can try British, <laughs> says Bowser. Yours is closer. EVE Online, okay, cool. Yeah, I've uh, I've never played EVE Online, but I am definitely familiar with it. Um, Scott Manley, famous Kerbal Space Program player, uh, was an EVE player first. All right. Surface. All right, let's make sure we are slowing down relative to the surface. Looks like we're coming down on a nice level patch. And let's just come down nice and gentle. Okay, it's an 11 degree slope now. Why is it always changing as we get closer? That's an, that's not right. That's not okay. <laughs> Very rude, Kerbal Space Program. Why you do this to me? Should be okay, I hope. Fingers are crossed. We're going 10 meters per second. We're 130 meters off the ground. All right, this is going to be interesting. And cut the engine. Okay, we're not as much as a of a bounce, but yeah, we are. Let's turn on the RCS. We're gonna fall over. No! That'll be okay. It'll be okay. Whew! Boost. I, I, I thought about it. I thought about it, but I think it would have actually gone worse. So we are going to have to turn around. <laughs> uh, we've done this before um, with a very similar vehicle. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have to hop away. So yeah, that... Uh, the initial reports were that we had a, about a three degree slope. <laughs> perfect landing, yes. Absolutely perfect. Nothing to be concerned about here. Uh, certainly this hasn't happened before. <laughs> um, and uh, But yeah, then we got closer and it said, nope, actually it's an 11 degree slope. Let's see, uh, let's catch up with chat. Um, uh, Kit says, isn't that where he got fly safe from? I think it is, yes. Um, <laughs> and they put a monument up and my character's name is on it. Oh, very cool. Oh, uh, let's see. Rolling on the floor. Literally. I see what you did there, Nia. Rolling on the floor. Uh, if the Kerbals can walk away from it, then it is a good landing, says Riven. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And uh, they're going to drive away. Look at this. Okay, but I do want to say, look how well I chose my target. Like, if I had landed over here, it would have been perfect. If I had landed up here, I think that's where I got the three degree slope from. Um, perfect. But we're only a third of a kilometer away from the actual Piglet Rover. So let's send Kit. <laughs> it's just falling out. <laughs> that was amazing. Um, oh, all right. Here's our, here's the robot arm. Here's the Piglet landing. landing. Flop. <laughs> uh, Rick roll. Yes, Kung. <laughs> and let's send Shipwreck. over here <laughs> all right let go and climb down turn on your suit lights there we go and let's let's head over uh we might uh especially if my kids are napping we might go into a little bit of overtime to get things done today and i don't want to do a, a whole ton of it and he says are those peppermints <laughs> i want to be an astronaut too um King Kong, we, uh, there is a uh, there is a redeem for rescue my Kerbal. Um, I don't know if it's active at the moment since uh, Bowser redeemed it, and I think I have it for uh, once per hour. Uh, we will see, but yeah, you can definitely redeem that even during a uh, Minecraft stream. Uh, Manchi was re redeemed by Shipwreck during a Minecraft stream. And that gives me time to make sure that I've got the contract set up for it and uh, rename the Kerbal. But yeah, we can definitely have Kung Kerman. <laughs> Meanwhile, the other one is trying to figure out how to get the rocket back on its pad, says Riven. Yes. <laughs> That's Raider's problem, not mine. 
Raider can figure that out. We've done this before. Um, a few months ago, I had a ship fall over and we, uh, we boosted it. Um, <laughs> we boosted it up a hill. <laughs> All right. Boop. Oh, take a little spill. There we go. All right, that's shipwreck. And let's see. Kit Kerman. All right, turn on your rocket jetpack. <laughs> Fanfare. King Kong uh, subscribing at tier one. Thank you very much for the subscription, King Kong. And there was your fanfare. <laughs> Is now a good time to say I'm afraid of heights? Probably. It's probably a very good time. <laughs> no. <laughs> King Kong saying, I love Dan's alert. Yes, I, uh, that is the Discovery Hit fanfare by the legendary Kevin McLeod, whose music, uh, you're hearing right now, in fact, um, his music is, uh, comprises most of the Kerbal Space Program soundtrack. A pack malfunction! <laughs> going to, going fly back to the station, pro. Yes. <laughs> uh, they can die, King Kong. In fact, um... I have four memorial flags back at the Kerbal Space Center. We've had actual memorial services for those guys. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, um, let's see. We're gonna need to use this to grab onto the hatch. Grab the hatch, there we go. And board. Let's kit aboard. And now Shipwreck needs to board. Oop. Didn't mean to jump, actually. But that will work. This hatch is blocked by the docking port, but uh, that's why we have this one back here. And board. Okay, here we go. We have uh, Kit Kerman and Shipwreck Kerman aboard the Piglet rover. Uh, <laughs> is there an enemy like aliens? There is not, um, although there is a mod called BD Armory that does add weapons, um, and uh, you can fly planes. There's even a, a actually pretty good AI um, for flying the planes, and uh, you can uh, you can fire missiles and such. So um, let's see. Let's turn the uh, let's see. The reaction wheels are disabled. Perfect, and we want to turn off the brakes. And we are driving. I did dogfights with a friend using BDA. Very cool. I never installed the uh, the multiplayer mods. Um, haven't tried those out. Uh, let's uh, drive it to the ship for a, uh, a screenshot. But um, Moonraker style fights. I so want to build Moonraker Station. I really do. <laughs> that is on my to-do list for Kerbal Space Program. Moonraker is one of my favorite movies. It's my wife's favorite uh, James Bond. I love how it goes back and forth between really good dramatic seriousness and absolute utter absurdity. Uh, we'd let the AI duke it out. Okay, we do uh, build crafts. Let's turn on the brakes here. I need to not go too fast. This thing can, can beat like 40 meters per second, but uh, it's not safe at that speed. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, we build crafts and the craft file over and then oh, okay, so you did it that way We each do trials of three on our own with the AI. Yeah, that works um, There was a series that I watched way back called collaboration station where um, about a dozen big-name um, Kerbal Space Program youtubers um, like Scott Manley um, uh, uh, Marcus House uh, Etc. Did a um, Danny 2462 they did a uh, collaboration where one of them would send up a module to a space station, send the save file to the next one who would add a module, etc. And then Danny2462, of course, deorbited the thing. <laughs> it was very cool. 
It's cheese, which is what makes it so great. <laughs> oh yes, and Matt Lown, yes, and Matt Lown. That was an awesome collab, it really was. I'd love to do something like that at some point. Um, the uh, KSP content creator community is a lot smaller than it used to be. Um, I'm hoping that will change with Kerbal Space Program 2. All right, let's get out and take a screenshot. BRB says, King Kong, uh, use the rover to tow the lander. Hmm. Towing, if I had uh, a couple mods, I could definitely do that and winch it. Um, without those, I could probably push it from here. I'll definitely dive deep into KSP2. I'm interested to see when uh, we finally get a hint of what the uh, multiplayer will be like. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe we'll have to try that out. That would be very cool. My ultimate dream multiplayer for Kerbal Space Program would be to do everything in IVA mode from the cockpit and uh, have uh, collaborations where uh, people are handling different systems, piloting, engineering, etc. Satan, welcome. How's it going, Dan? Um, well, we had a perfect landing, as you can see here. Um, I, uh, I've got Shipwreck and Kit Kerman here. Uh, <laughs> on the uh, the piglet lander let's let's use our camera tools mod and get the perfect screenshot all right let's do keypad control oh it's quick sas is taking those um that is all right let's just do let's just do this and Shipwreck. Plant a flag. <laughs> That's a bit more hardcore than I can manage, this kit. <laughs> Perfect landing. <laughs> landing site for the piglet rover. Uh, 30 pounds roughly might have to invest in it. Um, is that for that's for KSP one? Um, I bet you can get a sale. They it goes on sale pretty regularly, especially since uh, development is done. All right, let's. Um... Let's rotate this. I've got my Terran Empire flag. Right, take a step back, take a step back, over this way. <laughs> Alright, this will be perfect. Here we go, screenshot. Beautiful! Alright, so let's, let's get back in. under it there we go grab and board and kit whoa, whoa extreme close-up on kit Kerman. <laughs> there we go And board. Okay, so here's the question. Do we see anything that we can examine close by? Let's do some driving. <laughs> he says, ah, zoom in on that beautiful green face. Yes, indeed. <laughs> All right, let's do a quick jaunt. I like that word, jaunt. and see if we can use the uh, science arm. And then we need to go and rescue Bowsy Kerman. And actually, Nia, I watched your uh, recent uh, First Craft video and you used um, a uh, Kevin McLeod track that is one of my favorites from this soundtrack. 
<laughs> Woot, Bowsy! <laughs> yes. Um, is that just terrain scatter? This terrain scatter does not have a collider, so we can slide right through it. And I think that's the regular train. Uh, did Ripley, uh, Satan, die in that rescue mission, or are they still alive? They're still alive. Um, them being listed as dead was definitely a bug. Um, absolutely a bug, and not just me um, covering up for a derp or anything. Um, I'm being serious here. Uh, there was no derp there, it was just a bug, so I fixed it. So uh, Ripley is available to be assigned to a mission. <laughs> Nia says, yes, I was actually listening in right now at your music. Yeah, I, I love the, the music they chose for this, and... Um, the majority of it is by Kevin McLeod. Let's uh, let's do this. I want to go too fast. Let's get an epic shot here. Here we go. <laughs> oh, that is that is a sight. Oh, beautiful. Whoa, we're spinning out. <laughs> uh, Nia says, I pronounce it Kevin McLeod. Is that it or not? It could be. Usually uh, spelled like that is McLeod. <laughs> Cue the Tokyo Trip music. <laughs> yes. Where's, um, where's Mumbo Jumbo when we need him? <laughs> where's, where's Jono and his, uh, his parody. So I'm keeping an eye out. There are some, there are some uh, little uh, things that we can examine here. Um, I'm not sure if we're gonna find one here or not, but I really want to do at least one science experiment. We might have to uh, drive this guy around next stream. Um, I don't find something in another couple minutes, then yeah, we're going to save the, the expeditions. Yeah, we're going 10 meters per second, which is about 22, 23 uh, miles per hour for those more used to those um, measurements from driving in the U.S. Which is me. I much prefer, and why are we in that? Let's change uh, control point forward. Hmm, this should be this should be looking a little bit different. Actually, wait. Control from here. There it is. Okay, we were controlling from the docking port. There we go. Um, as much as I prefer the metric system, since everything is listed in miles per hour here, I am unfortunately used to that, and so I do conversions in my head as little as I can, but um, sometimes I just need to do that to get kind of a reference, because um, sometimes it's a little bit tricky in video games to get a, a sense. Let's look from in the cockpit. Hey there! <laughs> um, to get a sense of how fast you're really going. And that helps. Alright, let's search for two more minutes. I don't want to go into too many extra innings, and I'm going to look at my uh, ring camera on my phone here real quick. To make sure my kids are sleeping nicely. And we'll... Clip right through that thing. <laughs> yeah, I know, I saw it. Um, I think there's a mod that adds collider meshes to these, but it's very funny to just clip through them. There's no actual physics involved in those, they're just random and uh, visual. Okay, they are awake and my stepdaughter is in there, so I might have to negotiate for some extra innings. Um, I'm paying her to do the babysitting, but she probably doesn't want to do it for too long. She will want to go and play some of her own video games. And yeah, so there's since these don't really exist, they're just a visual thing, there's no science that I can do at them, unfortunately. But there are some moonstones, and there's some, I think, uh, geysers or craters? I'm not confident in a guy called Shipwreck piloting the piglet. Oh, but what could go wrong? What could go wrong? Look, look at him. That's a competent guy right there. And uh, here's his view. There's there's Kit right there, Kit Kerman. And there's our science arm. 
All right, let's aim for that thing there. Um, it's small, so it's uh, potentially real. <laughs> Where are the snacks, asks Nia. No, I think that's just regular terrain scatter. Let's see if it bumps our wheels. Oh, we missed it, but it's just regular terrain scatter. Where are the snacks, asks Nia. I don't think there's a snack compartment in here. Believe it or not, like everything else has snack. Oh, wait, there they are. If I do that. Okay, you can see the S and the N of snacks. Rock storage, snacks, yeah. <laughs> So yes, we have some snacks. Kit says, my hair is black at the start of the mission. Yeah, the um, the texture replacer mod continuity isn't its, its forte, unfortunately. But uh, let's just say Kerbals are chameleons and we have exceeded our time here. So um, let's go ahead and break. Ships driving has made me great. <laughs> oh, okay, is that what you're getting? Okay. <laughs> it it might have actually been. I don't remember. Actually, no. It, I think it. I think it has been. But the hair color ha I've noticed does change sometimes. So that's a thing. And how far have we gone? Three kilometers. Not bad. Um. Let's switch to target. Let's just move over here. And let's see if we can get this thing off the ground. And I'm going to real quick text my stepdaughter and negotiate extra innings. There we go. There's the robot arm that deployed it. Okay. All right, Raider. So, <laughs> um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yes. How's our monopropellant? We have half of it left. Well, let's take a drink. Um, don't tell anyone I was drinking and driving on the moon. But that's exactly what was happening. <laughs> So, we need to get this thing upright. Let's turn on the RCS and the main engines a little bit. Uh, we're losing, we're losing solar panels. Full thrust, full thrust. Okay, we are good, we are good. We lost a solar panel, okay good, that is, that is okay. Let's go to orbit reference and let's just get into an orbit. There's Kerbin right over there. Um, all right, back to target selection. We want to choose the nearby fuel tank, NFT. And we want to turn actually. So let's, let's point east. And we are actually pretty low on fuel, so, oof. <laughs> oh, that curb and rise, yes, yes indeed. Fortunately, I moved the camera away from it a little bit, but that's all right. And I need to conserve fuel. Kit says, I gotta go to work. Best wishes to your flight. All right, have fun at work, Kit. And thank you for hanging out. Um, hope uh, ship's driving hasn't uh, scared you too much. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's get up to that apoapsis. Which is higher than I would like it to be, but I think we'll be all right. Kit was stressing. <laughs> Fly safe, says Pro Kit Man. <laughs> yes, indeed. Thank goodness for the low gravity. <laughs> There's the stressing ones. 
<laughs> Not like this. Okay. It's point pro grade. Turn off the RCS. We don't need that for this. And actually, we need to adjust also our inclination. So we actually need to go this way. And as long as we can get into orbit, we might need to, uh, yeah, we only have 143 meters per second available to us. That is not enough. So, um, let's see. Bowser. <laughs> Would you be terribly upset if, uh, your rescue was during the, the next stream? Um, and I, uh, I do the deorbit of, uh, I do the deorbit of the old station um, as the grand finale of the last nine minutes of this stream. And then we start next week. Actually, next week I'll be doing... Um, next week might be iffy. We're doing the uh, the first stream weekend for the first SMP. So maybe I'll do a bonus stream. But yeah, your, uh, your redeem will definitely be honored. Um, but it's going to take... It's gonna take about 40 minutes, 30 or 40 minutes to uh, to get this all taken care of and rescue Bowsy Kerman if I do it right now. So I think we should we should hold off on that, and um, I will edit the save file so that Bowsy Kerman is um, exists in the world and is ready for a rescue. And uh, then next Kerbal stream, we will get this back to the uh, the nearby fuel tank and uh, send it to rescue Bowsy Kerman. And then we'll also drive around the rover and do some scientific experiments using the scanning arm. That, I think, is going to be our plan. So, I hope you don't mind that, Bowser. <laughs> but yeah, there's a, there's a lot more work than um, it probably looks like here to actually make that work. Shine the sun in your face? <laughs> Bowser's laughing. Okay, good. <laughs> as long as that's uh, not a problem for you. So let's let's take our first station, not Arcadia station, that's our current one. Station one. Ending soon, Dan? Yes, soon, but not yet. Also, I'm back. Perfect timing, King Kong. We are about to decommission the first space station that I put up here, station one. It uh, served us well, but is no longer in service. So we are going to decommission it. And by decommission, I mean um, deorbit it. And I just realized that maybe I'm not ready for this too. Um, let's hope that there are some engines and some fuel. I think there is. Okay, good. Yeah, we have almost two kilometers of Delta V available. So yes, this was our original station. We've got a fuel tank here. Um, this is more fuel. This is the, uh, the propulsion module that brought the fuel tank. Um, our habitation module, lights are still on. <laughs> and it looks like we've got a, f a couple of our uh, derp modules um, looks like one and then some uh, monopropellant tanks which are empty um, and here is our power module our core our station core so yeah this thing is about to go down in a blaze of glory so let's point it retrograde make sure we are controlling from here we weren't glad I checked that But yeah, as, as nice as this station is, it'll be fun to watch it burn up <laughs> in Kerbin's atmosphere. And let's uh, let's time warp just a bit. Let's get to sunrise. Here's a nice sunset. And at dawn, we deorbit. <laughs> Coming around the night side of Kerbin, enjoying the view of the city lights. And here comes dawn. We can see a little bit in the atmosphere there. There we go.
And there's the sun right there. All right, let's do this. Let's deorbit. And uh, we're going to light the engines in three, two, one. And there we go. And our periapsis is dropping. And there at 70 kilometers, we are in the atmosphere um, at periapsis. All right, we'll drop that to about 20 kilometers and let's point uh, prograde now. And once we're in the atmosphere, we will accelerate. Or no, let's just uh, let's just turn off stability assist. And let this thing rotate. <laughs> There we go. And I did double check to see that there were no Kerbals aboard and nobody is aboard. So there we go. Yeah, let's just enjoy this view for the last few minutes of the stream. And the music. Let's turn that up. We are coming down for sure. At a low frame rate because of the uh, the part count on this thing and uh, <laughs> and Kerbal physics. Oh, looks like we have entered the atmosphere. Yeah, we are in the atmosphere. All right, now we'll speed it up with the physics warp until we get the reentry effect. And uh, let's see how many pieces make it to uh, to the ground. Because with the as much drag as this thing is going to have, there will definitely be pieces that survive all the way to the ground. <laughs> boom, says King Kong. Yeah, there will be some booms. Hopefully some booms in atmosphere, but at the very least there will be booms on the ground. We are having this much surface area um, and the fuel tanks being basically empty means that uh, this thing very well might actually decelerate enough uh, quickly enough to survive all the way to the ground and then uh, crash in somebody's backyard. <laughs> fire emotes from King Kong. Yes, fire. I'm going to leave the uh, game sounds up here. They're not super loud, but... And that fuel tank on the back there um, is the only one that has fuel in it. So between that and the engine, that is definitely the heaviest part. And uh, all those pieces on the end, including the solar panels, those are giving a lot of drag, so this thing is going to be quite aerodynamically stable in the direction it's pointing. Let's do this. a sonic boom there not an explosion boom <laughs> how fast are we going now yeah we are slowing down 2.2 kilometers per second lots of bilateral rotation yeah and it is 
It is wobbling back and forth as well. Very nice. <laughs> oh, I love the camera tools mod. Closest thing to replay mod that, um, that KSP has. <laughs> More epic if we combine with the Shooting Stars meme sound effect. I, I don't know the sound effect, though, so unfortunately I can't imitate it. <laughs> Hope that didn't just skip. Uh, I was checking that. And no, we are still going down, and our periapsis is negative, so we are absolutely going to impact Kerbin. And I'm going to just keep resetting the camera path here, because this is a cool view for it. But yeah, we're well under orbital velocity, so... <laughs> Another sonic boot. That is a lot of fire. Yeah, and we have slowed down enough that we're out of the plasma blackout. And yeah, we have lost no parts yet. Dang. Looks like it's going to come down in a, a planes. Yep, we are in Kerbin's grasslands. Going pretty slow, actually. It's going to make one huge trench. <laughs> Hopefully not in someone's backyard. Oh, we have, we do have parachutes. We have we have parachutes that automatically just deployed from uh, the uh, the reentry module. That's hilarious. Okay, do I... Do I cut the shoots or see what they can do? Do we want a boom or do we want... Do we want to attempt a recovery? It, there will be a boom either way because it's it's going to land on this and then tip over. <laughs> uh, Kang says, I don't know how to show you, but you definitely know it when people used to fly around... Space and universe. Uh DM it to me on um on Discord. I uh I'm sure I know it, but I'm not placing it. <laughs> Riven says some poor Kerbal enjoying a cup of tea on their patio. It gets a space station touching their nose. <laughs> what are we? Chinese space agency? Just dropping boosters on people's uh heads. <laughs> this is pretty awesome actually. Um okay. All right, let's uh I was not expecting that. I should have uh, I should have known. All right, we are a kilometer and a half up. Let's see how much of this is is saved. <laughs> this is not the outcome I was expecting. We're going to hit at about 18 meters per second. That's pretty slow. Dang. We might get some money back out of this. Let's watch it come down. Those are powerful drag shoots. Yeah, the, the KSB shoots are a little bit uh, overpowered. I definitely have more than I need for uh, for the, uh, the return prods. <laughs> and boop. Wow. What? No booms. I hope you guys aren't disappointed that there are no booms. I just landed a space station. Unexpectedly. Um, right, that was supposed to be a screenshot. There we go. Uh, I mean, you can be impressed all you want, but that wasn't what I was trying to do. I mean, this, <laughs> this would be, this would be impressive if it was what I was trying to do. But I was trying to make it, uh, explode. <laughs> That, that was amazing. That's hilarious. So, I think I might, 
I might leave it there. I wanted boom. OMG. <laughs> well, Bowser, I'm actually going to end here. So why did I even come back for this as Pro Kitman? <laughs> no boom. <laughs> salvage rights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone has salvage rights. Maybe we'll uh, we'll drive a rover over to it um, in the future. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave it there for now. For now. So two-year-old smashed eggs everywhere in the kitchen. Oh, no. <laughs> we want explosions. <laughs> okay. You want explosions. And fireworks. <laughs> More boom in Australia than in KSP. <laughs> oh, boom go those eggs. Oh, rip. Well, good luck with that, Bowser. I hope uh, that's not too much to uh, to clean up. All right, let's let's do a real quick boom because you guys deserve it. Oh, let's just put that on and uh, yeah, let's do a nice big solid booster. <laughs> They're spread out. No! That's horrible. Uh, control. Let's just put um, a reaction wheel on this thing and a nose cone and call it good. Some, uh, some little fins. Actually, no, let's put big fins, because they look cooler. Alright, here we go. I just made a giant Estes model rocket. <laughs> uh, let's see. The boom. Er. <laughs> We're just going to name it that. Here we go. I'm gonna spending 6,500 spacos just to give you guys a little bit of a boom. This is what KSP is intended for. Yeah, what the heck is wrong with my K Kerbal Space Program? Even my space station can't blow up. <laughs> we got more boom on the surface of the moon with that uh, solar panel getting knocked off the side of the ship. Thanks a lot, Raider. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, and launch. And we're gonna go this way. <laughs> oh, we're going out to sea. Oh, that's not what I did. Let's go. <laughs> Watch it reach orbit. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Uh, it actually had enough. Delta V. Let's see. Maybe we'll get a nice boom in the atmosphere. We're going fast. I'm glad I didn't go with the bigger one. I almost went with the bigger one. Okay, we've spent our fuel. <laughs> this is an ICBM. Here we go. We're just, uh, we're just screwing around now. All right, we're in space. Let's see how far it goes. Mop time. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> this was not in the plan today. All right, we're back in the atmosphere. Here we go. This will be a boom. It's going to overheat. There we go. Boom. 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 <laughs> I 
<laughs> they go with the uh with the cub fan hype with the rocket that's perfect that's literally the perfect emote for this i need to get some uh, ksp emotes <laughs> there we go um highest altitude reach 800 kilometers almost uh 2.6 kilometers per second 13.3 g's at the end yay boom boom says bowser all right and that's where we're gonna leave it um let's see um looks like oh we do have someone um that i've rated before playing kerbal space program um tiger duck let's see if they're doing anything actually i might uh so originally i planned to only raid the in the same game um oh he just he just finished so uh we're gonna raid nia who is streaming minecraft um, but yeah, there just aren't enough uh, Kerbal streamers these days, unfortunately. So uh, uh, we're going to go ahead and go to Nia, who is a friend here and a fellow FirstCraft player with uh, myself, Bowser, and Pro Kitman. And uh, we're going to see what she is up to. And uh, just just yell boom. <laughs> just yell boom when you uh, when you get there. So let's. Uh, I'm going to load up her stream now. I don't think I'll get an ad, but just in case so that I'm already there, and mute it so that we don't get an echo. Um, okay, it's perfect. She's breaking bedrock, so she's playing with TNT. So yeah, booms. Booms all around. Let's go yell boom. All right, thanks, everyone. Uh, next week, uh, uh, first craft stream re weekend, and uh, on uh, Wednesday, uh, Monday and Wednesday also some uh, Minecraft. I'll see you then.